So in this uh, process here, so we've got the blood test has come back, right? And now we're looking at the individual elements themselves. It's really important to be able to start having um, a way to be able to not only connect those elements together, but also to, to really think about what, what physiologically in the body is causing these uh, elements to be elevated or decreased. So here's the thinking process I want you to be conversant with, with each and every element on a test. So you have to think about where does this element come from? Where does the element come from? What are some of the reasons that it might be elevated and what are some of the reasons why it might be decreased? So in the next few slides, I'm going to talk about BUN, blood urea nitrogen. It's a very common element. It's probably going to be on every single blood test you do unless you're running a CBC. Uh, it's just one of those things that's included. And I'm going to answer these questions using BUN as our example. So you can then take this thinking process and apply it to other elements on a blood test. So let's get started with question number one. Where does BUN come from? So first of all, and, and the, you know, this is kind of the difficulty when your patients are looking at these blood tests. So their experience is they go to a medical doctor, the guy or female doctor hands them the blood test report. And some labs are, do a really good job of kind of making it look nice, and other labs don't. It's almost as if, you know, the lab companies sort of want to sort of obfuscate all of the results, make it cryptic and difficult to look at. So on one hand, they've got to learn or understand what each of these names are or acronyms. So BUN, for instance, what, is it, what does it stand for? Well, many of the, the elements on a blood screen are abbreviations such as, you know, BUN, MCV, MCH, MCHC, ALT, SGOT, BUN, I mean, we should become very familiar and very comfortable with what these are, but we also have to be able to sort of translate to our patients what that really means. And sometimes it actually tells you what that uh, element does, ALT, alanine transferase. So BUN stands for blood, urea, nitrogen. Even just saying that kind of gives you a clue of what it is and some clues about why it might be elevated or decreased. So it's found in the blood, it's urea, and it has a nitrogen associated with it. So what's the main source of nitrogen in the body? Well, amino acids. And if we think about back to our basic biochemistry, organic chemistry and that type of thing, what does every amino acid have that makes it an amino acid is a nitrogenous component to their chemical structure. And so when our bodies take amino acids in and we digest them, the body has to do something with that nitrogen. And that's where the urea cycle comes in. But what about urea? And so this is why having a kind of a background in biochemistry and physiology and chemistry is really helpful. Because if you can cast your mind back to the urea cycle, you remember that urea is formed in the liver and is the final product in protein catabolism, protein breakdown. So now we're getting somewhere, right? Blood, urea, nitrogen. Found in the blood, urea involved with protein breakdown has that nitrogenous component to it. Uh, the nitrogen gets, you know, fixated into the urea molecule. So what else is needed with it is CO2 in that process. So B1 is almost uh, is found, formed almost entirely by the liver from both protein metabolism and protein digestion. So, huh, protein digestion. So what do we have to consider with protein digestion? Yeah, absolutely we have to look at protein digestion. In fact, it's the very first thing from my functional hierarchy that I take a look at. So BUN is going to be affected by protein digestion. Fancy that. Let's go take a look at, here we go. This is that functional hierarchy, gastrointestinal system, BUN, associated with the GI. So this is also one of those elements that I look at for evidence of hypochlorhydria, or low stomach acid. Stomach acid very involved with protein digestion, right? 
So if we have poor protein digestion, we can have a shift in the BUN. So why, what are some of the reasons why BUN might be elevated? So now that we have an idea of where it comes from, let's now think about some of the reasons why it might be elevated. So when it comes to an increased level of any element in the body, I want you to think of these three things. So when thinking about an increased level of an element, the first thing to ask yourself is this. Is the presence of this element due to being consumed, too much of it being consumed from the outside, i.e. exogenously, or too much being synthesized or created internally, endogenously. So the exogenous question can be really important for things that are typically consumed, calcium, B12, iron. In the terms of BUN, excessive protein intake can cause an increased BUN because BUN levels is dependent on the dietary protein. Remember back, the, the protein gets broken down into the constituent amino acids. The body has to deal with that. It goes into the urea cycle. The way the body gets you rid of urea is through blood urea nitrogen. Probably the most important consideration for BUN is the endogenous production because there are a number of factors that can increase BUN endogenously, i.e. from inside. Is it being synthesized or created internally? So I'm going to name some of them. An increased BUN level is often associated with a decreased production of hydrochloric acid in the stomach, hyperchlorhydria. This leads to increased levels of undigested protein in the intestines and greatly predisposes one towards the development of a dysbiotic bowel with an overgrowth of bacteria. So putrefactive action of this bacterial overgrowth on the excess nitrogenous waste releases significant quantities of ammonia. Some of this ammonia will be converted into urea by the liver. And increased bacteria in the colon will also metabolize urea, often leading to an increased BUN. So that's why BUN is actually a marker for dysbiosis in the body. Urea is recovered, removed almost entirely by the kidneys. However, a significant amount travels from the liver to the colon and is acted upon by gut microflora to recirculate nitrogen. So it becomes a good marker for dysbiosis. In the large intestine, we get that putrefactive action. We get the uh, urea being taken back up into the, the body and the liver. The next thing you have to consider with every element has to do with how the body gets rid of it. So in terms of the BUN, the first thing you should think of is the kidney. An elevated BUN can mean that it's not being excreted properly, so levels are building up in the body. So BUN is removed primarily by the kidneys, so any dysfunction or disease in the kidney will cause its levels to rise, which is why BUN is traditionally a kidney marker. And again, renal conditions happen on a spectrum, all the way from dysfunction of the kidneys all the way through to overt kidney disease. So I look at a dysfunction of the kidneys in terms of this uh, dysfunction called renal insufficiency. So the renal, the kidneys are just not working properly. They're not broken. They're just not working properly. BUN levels are starting to creep up outside of the optimum range. They're not crossed over into the uh, above the normal or pathological range. We're still dealing with a functional issue here. The creatinine also might be doing the same thing. So renal insufficiency or decreased renal function occurs long before one sees overt renal disease. So we start to think of renal insufficiency when the BUN gets over 16 milligrams per deciliter in the States or over 5.71 millimoles per liter in the uh, standard international units that are used outside of the state. So on the other end of the spectrum, we have, you know, we started out one end of the spectrum is, uh, you know, renal insufficiency. The kid is not functioning properly, not quite broken yet, not quite disease. Let's go look at all the way at the other end of the spectrum. We have overt kidney disease. Wonderful elements to look at for kidney disease. So significant impaired kidney function can lead to renal disease. In this case, the BUN is typically above the normal or pathological range, above 25 milligrams per deciliter or above 8.93 millimoles per liter for uh, standard international units. 
So what are some of the reasons uh, why it might be decreased? Let's turn our attention to that. It's actually almost the opposite of the questions that we just asked. Again, not enough exogenously, not enough endogenously. So when thinking about a decreased level of any element, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, is the lack of this element being consumed from the outside or exogenously, or is the lack of this element due to it not being synthesized or created internally? And that's the endogenous one. So let's take a look at the BUN example. When it comes to BUN, we should quickly go to protein intake. That's why it's a great marker for protein intake in the body. So decreased BUN level is associated with a diet that is low in protein, protein deficiency, that type of thing. The amount of urea excreted as BUN varies with the amount of dietary protein intake. So low protein diets may show up with a decreased BUN level below 10 or 3.57 millimoles per liter. We should also think about the GI tract here, and something that should come to mind is malabsorption. Decreased BUN is associated with a chronic intestinal malabsorption, which is an inability of nutrients to be absorbed through the intestinal wall. Malabsorption can lead to a functional protein deficit, along with a lot of other things, which in turn will lead to lower levels of protein catabolism and low BUN levels. Continuing with our GI theme, we should also consider how proteins are digested further down the GI tract. A decreased BUN is associated with pancreatic insufficiency or a lack of enzymes that are being secreted from the pancreas. So decreased levels of digestive enzymes, especially the protease, can lead to a functional protein deficit. So this in turn will lead to lower levels of protein catabolism and low BUN levels. So that's just dealing with the sort of the exogenously part here. Not enough being created endogenously, given that BUN is synthesized in the liver and that the liver is one of the key organs in the body to become dysfunctional, it's not a stretch of the imagination to think that liver dysfunction can cause a decreased BUN. So yeah, given that the BUN is synthesized in the liver, we need to look at the liver as well. So dysfunction on the liver will have a great impact on protein production and synthesis which will affect the availability of protein for catabolism, resulting in low BUN levels. This, of course, is not just limited to liver dysfunction because overt liver disease and liver failure can cause this too. So the full spectrum of liver issues. So one last question is this. Is too much being excreted? In terms of the kidney, we know that the renal disease actually causes BUN levels to increase because it cannot be excreted properly. So what could possibly cause the opposite? Again, we have to take a journey back to renal physiology. And we remember that the kidney is under the influence of a hormone called ADH for antidiuretic hormone. ADH is produced in the posterior pituitary, and its job is to stop the kidney from releasing too much water. A posterior pituitary dysfunction can affect ADH output, which can cause the kidney to excrete too much BUN. So if you see a decreased BUN and you're suspecting an ADH issue, uh, you have a decreased urine-specific gravity and a decreased BUN creatinine ratio that's below 10. This can be an indication of dysfunction in the posterior pituitary. So I'll say that again. If you see a decreased BUN along with a decreased urinary-specific gravity and a decreased BUN creatinine ratio below 10, this can be an indication of dysfunction in the posterior pituitary. So not super common, but worth considering. Someone just put a post here. They want me to kind of talk a little bit more about the BUN on the liver. Okay, so let's go over that again. So the not enough being produced endogenously. So BUN is synthesized in the liver, and that the liver is one of the key organs in the body to become dysfunctional. So we can imagine that if there's any type of liver dysfunction, it's going to impact BUN levels. Dysfunction in the liver will have a great impact on protein production and protein synthesis. That's where it all happens, in the liver. And this will affect the availability of, of amino acids, really, not, not protein so much, but amino acids uh, from kind of being broken down and catabolized, and this can cause a low BUN level. So hopefully that's helpful, helpful how you think about uh, different elements in the body. And again, you can apply that to 
MCV, you can apply it to iron, you could apply it to ferritin, all those types of things.